The Lord closes his letter to Sardis with encouragement to the small group of faithful believers who remained. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Revelation 3 verse 4. In the midst of the dead church were a precious few who had not followed the church into sin and spiritual decay. They were genuine believers among the hypocrites, a few separated and spiritual among the carnal and the worldly. The Lord had a small remnant of true Christians leading pure, wholesome, Christ-like lives in the midst of this dead, corrupt church. In Romans 11, 1 through 5, Paul reminds his readers that God will always have a remnant of his people Israel, no matter how dire and spiritually dead the nation appears. I say then, God has not rejected his people, has he? May it never be, for I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets, they have torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they are seeking my life. But what is the divine response to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. In the same way then, there has also come to be at the present time a remnant according to God's gracious choice. Evidently, the number of faithful believers in Sardis was minuscule. It was small enough not to impact the Lord's evaluation that the church as a whole was dead. But that did not mean that the Lord would forget or ignore those faithful few that had carried on in love for the truth and perseverance. As the author of Hebrews reminds us, God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name in having ministered and still ministering to the saints. Hebrews 6.10 The Lord did not forget his people in Sardis. In fact, he memorialized their faithfulness to every generation of the church in his letter. He says they have not soiled their garments verse 4. Translated literally, the word means stained or dyed. In scripture, garments are often used to refer to the spiritual character of a person. Jude 23, for instance, describes the spiritual contamination of people corrupted by false teachers as the garment polluted by the flesh. These unsoiled garments represent the godly character impurity of these few believers. All the more remarkable when you consider the corruption of their church. Christ says this faithful remnant will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. White robes, like the ones Christ describes here, were commonly worn at celebrations and festivals or after military victories. Even pagans would come to worship their false gods in clean white robes as a symbol of their goodness and virtue. They wanted to present themselves as worthy of the idol's affection and goodwill. But these aren't merely clean robes in the temporal world. Christ is referring to the bright, gleaming spiritual robes of imputed righteousness, covering believers who have been purified by a sacrifice on their behalf. In Revelation 7 verse 14, we read of those who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is the glorious truth of the gospel. In Romans 5 verse 19, Paul says, For as though one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one the many will be made righteous. Just as we were made sinners through Adam's sin, we have been made righteous through Christ's death. How? Paul proclaims the reality in 2 Corinthians. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. On the cross, God treated Christ as if he had lived my life of sin, so that he 
could treat me as if I had lived Christ's life of righteousness. As new creations in Christ, we are cloaked in his righteousness. When God looks at us now, he sees only the holy perfection of his Son. The imagery of soiled garments is a thread that runs through Scripture. Because we are fallen creatures, hopelessly defiled by our own sin, even the righteous deeds we do cannot cover our sins. Indeed, all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy garment. Isaiah 64 verse 6 The very best things we do are still tainted by sin. Thus, anyone who expects to stand before God, clothed in the righteousness of his or, or her own good works, is trusting a garment that is polluted by the flesh. God demands perfect righteousness. Jesus said, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5 verse 20. How high is the standard? You are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now that sets an unattainable standard, but Christ provides a perfect righteousness by imputation for all who truly trust him as Lord and Savior. God imputes righteousness to believers apart from any good works that they do. The righteousness of Christ covers them like a gleaming white, spotless garment of absolute perfection. In the words of Isaiah 61 verse 10, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with the robe of righteousness. That's what the Apostle Paul meant when he testified that he had come to be, by faith, found in Christ, not having a righteousness of my own, derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. Philippians 3.9 The process of sanctification is progressively purifying believers to make them more and more Christ-like. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit, 2 Corinthians 3.18. One day, when we go to be with Christ, or when he returns to take us from this world, our glorification will be instantly complete. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet appeared as yet what we will be. But we know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we will see him just as he is. These are the robes John describes the church wearing at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Revelation 19, 7 through 8. The small remnant in Sardis had not fallen into pagan impurities. They had not succumbed to sinful practices. They were in a dead church, but were alive spiritually. And for their faithfulness, they would walk with their Savior in eternal holiness. Maranatha.